Back with Fred Ashford, the biggest, prettiest power lifter I know. Um, we were talking about programming. We got cut off in the video. Fred, you want to continue uh, what we were talking about? Yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, um, you know, we were talking about how there's there's folks out there that are getting their programming from their gym bros or from the magazines. What I recommend, and at any level, because I 30 years and I still seek out help, I'll bounce things off folks that I know and trust, and I'll say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Just to get input. What I would do is, uh, I would. there's a couple, three very good um, um, e-books out there, books that you can buy electronically. Uh, one is called Massive Strength. Massive Iron. Massive Iron, his book. His book. I would uh, I would read one of those three. I'm not going to mention the other two because they're competition. Well, no, you sell them. No, on that's that, all right, dude. man. We're, uh, we're, it's all good. We're, uh, we're, we share the love. Jonathan Bird has a book. Um, um, you can find it on Muscle and Bronze. It's called Big. And Brian Carroll has a book on there. 1020 Life. Those, uh, those three gentlemen, I would start with uh, those three books. I'd read it. I'd absorb it. And then I'd do yourself a favor. Spend a little money and contact them. So you can have some one-on-one -on -one dialogue about your programming and your form and send them some videos, and it can give you a starting spot. And, no, I'm sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no. You were talking about, Fred was talking about how he, uh, before we got cut off, about how he um, he only does like one set per, per, uh, per exercise. I, I, want to sh I want to share a little bit of insight on my programming. My lift started to rocket in three years ago when I switched to one set, one heavy daily set on squats and on bench press. On deadlifts, it was a little bit different. Um, you know, I wasn't pulling off the floor. But anyway, I was doing five sets max a week, even though I was squatting twice a week and benching twice a week. Um, I was doing a very a higher frequency, but a very low volume. Now, if you go on the net and you say, and, and you Google how to get strong, and you read every major strength trainer, they're not going to have you train like me and Fred, okay? We're, we're low volume, and maybe that's because we're old and pretty, but we're low volume, but we're, we both rank in the top 20 all time, you know, um, in our weight class. And uh, the, the point here is that, you know, programs are like starting points. Um, you know, you can have a starting point, but I don't believe in magic programs. I, I believe that you, you start here and you, you pick a program that's reasonable. And over time, you got to start to listen to your body and evolve that training program based on your body. How important do you feel that is, Fred? Oh, I, I think it's critical. You, I, I think that is the essence. you got to go back to um, what I was talking about and what you do with, with single heavy sets. The root of that is actually Arthur Jones, the guy that created Nautilus. He uh, um, sponsored a little powerlifter called, or bodybuilder called Casey Vieter. Uh, Mike Mincer picked it up in heavy duty. Mike Mincer trained Dorian Yates. None of those powerlifters, but the strongest bodybuilders alive at their time. And the philosophy was, after you work a muscle to its maximum intensity, one or less than one rep shy of failure... Anything after that, it's susceptible to injury because the muscle is no longer its strongest. So I took that, developed my programming on, on this whole year was 10 days rest. And I, it determined, because I was forced to do high volume because of my injury, high volume was deteriorating my form. So 30 years into the game, and I'm still evolving from some starting point I had years ago. And next year, I'm going to do four reps. But there's no way I can get the, the, rep, the work in at four reps over 10 days. I'm going to go four reps once a week and throw in some light work in between just on the bench and deadlift so I got some blood flow. The point that Steve made is it's always evolving. It's, uh, it's always moving towards uh, the changes that you're making as an individual. And it's very, very individualized. So when you start working with a master programmer then you can develop over time with that individual, and he can be a sounding board to you. One of the things I always tell guys is um, 
Well, let me just backtrack here. You get a lot of questions like, uh, I get a lot of questions from guys like, hey, I tried this workout, this isn't working, so I'm going to jump to a different workout. Or, hey, I tried this workout, this isn't working. So instead of tweaking programs, Fred, they, they just jump to a program. And this is something you see across the, this is, this is a plague, you know, amongst the beginning lifters because there's so many programs out there these days that they, they try a program, everything doesn't, isn't perfect for them, so they jump to a different program. And in my advice is instead of jumping, try to figure out what variable isn't right. If you don't like six reps on the bench press and you feel like lower reps suit you better, use lower reps. It's okay to make those changes. It's okay to evolve your training and create your own program. You know, that, that's basically that's basically what I push. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's one of the variables that's, um, you know, if you're going to be in this game for a long period of time, that's that's one of the things you need to master. What are some of the mistakes you've made along those lines, Fred? I mean, some of the things that you forced yourself to stick to because so-and-so said this is the way you got to do it. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, first, I, I, the mistakes I've made – are really the last 30 years of, of powerlifting bodybuilding because, you know, before inside powerlifting came out, you're reading muscle and fitness and you were looking at these workouts and you thought, oh my God, how did, how did, how do these guys get through a day? Well, the real answer is they didn't because it was all bullshit. You know, they weren't following those programs. That was for the magazine. And then you looked at inside powerlifting and you go, these guys are minimalists. They're not doing anything and I thought well somewhere lies the truth in between so I I started with the old pyramids and then I went to the three sets of five um, three days a week and I can remember I, I was mining working underground working shift work and literally working out four days a week um, working every every body part twice very hard multiple sets could finally couldn't drag myself out of bed, I wasn't getting enough sleep, I wasn't eating enough food, and I wasn't training properly. And it was only until I started taking a step back and say, wait a second. It was a concept that took, it took me 15 years. Because look, at we got thick skulls, it takes a long time to get through here. This concept, once I, once I embraced it, everything changed for me. And that is, less is more. The less I did... When I did it effectively with great form and kept evolving the form and consistent programming, staying consistent, eating well, progressing slowly and realize it doesn't happen overnight, it finally started happening for me. So it only took 15 years. So hopefully it takes you guys like right now. Now, I, uh, I, you know, I write a lot of workouts, um, you know, because I work in the industry and there's one consistent thing I know is that is if I put out a five day split with 25 sets per day, it's the most popular workout on the on the internet. If I tell guys three or two days a week, like John Christie, I'm not sure if you know who John Christie is, but John Christie is a guy that trained hundreds, maybe thousands of people on two days a week. Um, if you put out a more minimalistic program, it's not very popular. The, the point I'm not trying to make here is, is simple. Sometimes I'm, you might be asking, hey, big, ugly guy, why do you put out four to five day workouts? And sometimes if people need those to get them motivated and get their butts in the gym, it's, it's like giving them a starting point. You know, some people just won't do two or three days a week. Some people, you know, won't do a minimalistic type of workout. So I write workouts like that just to kind of get people motivated and get their butts into the habit and get them to the gym. But the point I'm trying to make here is if you're wondering where to start on programming, it's better to start on the more minimalistic side. Would you agree, Fred? You know, a little bit fewer sets, a little bit fewer days rather than a little bit more. Well, you stay healthy. You know, first off, you stay healthy. You're recuperating more. And you can always add without the risk of uh, hurting yourself or setbacks in training. Right. You can always add if you're feeling good. Absolutely. Or if you feel it's needed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are sometimes I don't know about you, Fred, but I was talking about this the other day. Um, you know, this, this might make, not make us the most popular guys on the Internet, <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. There are certain YouTube personalities these days that 
just push the concept of overtraining. You got to overtrain. You got to overtrain. You got to overtrain. And quite frankly, I believe that is a steaming load of horse crap. Um, but, you know, it's pushing these kids to believe they have to overtrain to make progress. But, you know, it's okay. I was saying this the other day. It's okay to go in the gym every now and then and do something crazy. Like one time last year, I did 500 deadlift reps for with 315 pounds just because I wanted to see if I could do it and I felt good. You know, you ever, you ever do any of those crazy type of uh, workouts, Fred, over the years? No. No? No, yeah. Yeah, I have the... The the biggest one is we had a um, it was based on you know the NFL combines and we had a contest trying to get to forty reps with two twenty five so for three months I abandoned my training trying to get to four I never got to forty reps but trying to get there to two twenty five and I, I uh, uh, had some delt pet tie in stuff that I still feel to this day just little twinges every now and then because of doing something crazy like that. That type of stuff is okay. You know, that type of stuff is fun. It's okay to have fun in the gym. It's okay to mess around with those workouts. Just don't believe you need to have them as a Especially staple. when you light the, the barbells while you're lifting. If you could light them, that looks very cool. Huh? Light them on fire? Yeah. Yeah. We're <laughs> going to try that in our next video. <laughs> Guys, we're going to be right back. I'm going to pause this video, and we're going to come back with uh, some more powerlifting spiel.